final cleaning, CRC clean job. for something for some tampons or something. Mm. That side looks clean though. Don't use, mm -hmm. don't use the other side, it's pretty good. See, somebody used my clean towel for wiping their butt with and now it's filthy. Gotta watch out for that around here. Dumbass just take any towel they see. Usually something on top that's nice and clean. You go, you go wash something really filthy with it, don't care about it. See, it's not really coming out dirty, it's just wet looking. Mm -hmm. Pretty clean. I'll go from the other side. Yeah. Got a little bit of grit in there, not too much. Their butt without too bad. I don't need to get this last cleaning in here. See if we pick up anything at all. I think most of what you're getting on that cloth is uh, the liquid. The liquid and in, in along the top brim. You can see how shiny they are. Uh -huh. They're shiny. They're not very dirty. smoother what you had but you can see the scratch is deep in that's what holds the oil and the real smoothness on top is what the rings see so it's really low drag so it's like the cylinder's already got a couple thousand miles on it now compared to like the cylinders you had it's like 50,000 miles <laughs> you think you're so stinking rough I can't believe it like I said my first stone is was smoother than your fish that's true terrible But you still got the cross hatch in there, that's the key. You know, it's really fine. You feel the drag, feel it. No drag on that. Now, the smoother you make it, the harder you got to break it in. So. Don't go babying it too awful much. Okay. Just got to keep the heat down. Heat is your enemy. Probably eat the thing up about three, four times and make a pass down the track. <laughs> <laughs> then you pull over. By the time you're in the track, it's not up to full temp yet. It's not, it doesn't have a lot of heat. True. Sure. Well, I load on it, but not a lot of heat. Heat kills. And the next one you do is get a little bit harder on it. Put more nitro on it. <laughs> Put the nitrous this time. Broken in. 
Let's give it a little juice, yeah. You got two runs in it, still running. Oh, it's broken in. <laughs> there you go. You're like it's not broken. Okay, there's your rings. Stick them in there. Yeah, there's a gap. Humongous gap. Is that the size gap you wanted? You know, I'm not entirely sure. This was the What's that? top ring. Top 30, ring. 30, 30, top ring had a lot of gap on it. As far as the second ring. Second ring is right there at about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. That's what this thing is. It's tapered. Cut, how they cut it. Mm. It's a little bit looser now, but not much. It's only a thou or two bigger than this. This thing's easy 15, 16, easy when I measure it, but it varies. Couldn't have one mood I'm in. It's got to have enough to expand, It's right? 15 right now. Today it's 15. So when you pull it out, squeeze together and lift up. This here was the top ring. Usually the second ring has more gap, not the top ring. Four out more. So if you squeeze it and lift it right out, like put too many marks in the cylinder. I think it's got clearance. That's more better. It actually went through the hole. That's better. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Do a pair at a time, or all four. I don't care. You can just look at them and see the big gap in them. <laughs> Second ring. Yeah, it's got plenty of gap in that one. Hey, look at a time. No, answering the uh, text from the wife. Oh, uh, yeah, you're late. Yeah, they got this top ring really loose. I don't know why. Just that's backwards. You should have the second ring loose and the top ring tight. They're ass backwards. Hmm. So much for them. That's Harley for you. Custom made rings for Harley. Junk. Okay, where's the wrist pins at? I thought I pulled everything out of the box or everything, but Thank you. we don't have any rings. I don't mean no wrist pins. Let me look again. I'm going to miss the something in here. Oh, they got a little hidden container over here in the side. And the box feels lighter now. They have a little hidden cubby hole in the corner there. <laughs> easier. Alright. So do we need to read the recommended clearances here? Yeah, it was hidden. Right over here. Kind of stupid how they figured that out. Hundred 
nice lightweight wrist pins. And boat anchors Harley uses. All the stuff looks like Y school cards to me. Okay, do these fit? That's fine. They run racing fit on these wrist pins. Pretty loose for a street bike, I think. Hmm. The burrs work through. Yeah, clearance. There's crap or something feeling there. See, it's not falling through. Mm hmm. Okay, is there a front and rear? Yes. It says front. I've had my Adam and they were both front. I've had that before. <laughs> rear. So there is a front and a rear. Yeah, I've actually had them where they put the same number on both of them. <laughs> That's how they were made too, not just by mistake. Oh, wow. Yeah. It wasn't just the guy packaging them up. Yeah. Actually made that way. Okay, so I put the clip in there. I'm way so far away. You can't see shit way back there. I'm gonna walk way over here. So I got the clips right in there on the top. And see, it's over, it's past the groove there. Mm -hmm. So you take the, the uh, piston installation tool here. Hear it all the way down now? Yeah, make sure it knocks all the way in. Yeah, now it's all the way and in. And it locks in. Yeah, what's in there? You can look at it too. Now, you want to put the gap between there and near where you pry it out so you can pry it out and get the thing out. Guy asked me a comment about you put it 180 across. Well, if you do that, you have to compress the whole stinking ring to get the damn clip out. Gotcha. This way here, you just you just pull into one tang and lift out. Gotcha. It's a lot easier. So I do like covering up the groove though with a retainer if possible, but otherwise you have to rotate it to get the thing out. It makes it a bit harder. So that one's good. These are nice light duty ones that I like. They're only like 52 thou thick or something, I think. Versus the other ones are like a 16th thick, 62. That extra 10 thou makes a big, big difference on the amount of pressure it takes to install them. See, these ones just compress real easy. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to fight them. Try to get them close to where they belong. If those are the fat ones, I'd be in there forcing the hell out of them. Once it's in, it's in there. Simple. All right. What are you using for oil on this bike? I haven't really got there yet. A braking oil? We need to figure out something. It's time to put some oil in here right now. You always want oil in the crank before you start it. Mm -hmm. You want to break it in there or you always put regular oil in it? What do you want? Um, I don't know. I mean, there's so many theories. You know, I hear don't run synthetic to break in a motor. I hear run synthetic to break in a motor. I'm, I will be running synthetic. I just asked if you want to use a brake in oil. I didn't ask you a synthetic. Oh, yes. Brake in oil, please. Here, go grab me a cord off the shelf up there. Top right. What's it called? Brake in oil. That'll do. Make it simple. Okay, 
we're using climatic break in gaskets. Break the cylinders in. Did you get lost over there? Yeah. Top right. Find it. Well, how good is these gaskets when the plastic coating is already separating off the damn gasket here? Look at this. It's already peeling off. Haven't seen that before. Look at this crap. It's all coming off. Oh. These things are really thin too. Did you get lost over there? Ah, Where was it located? It was uh, in the top right, but way back, way back in the... Uh... Well, this is a damaged good. Would you drop it on the way out? No. Nope. Your, your plastic guy's coating is already peeling off these things. See? Ooh. These are thin. So, so you're not a real fan of those, huh? These things are really, really thin. How thin are these things? Looks like they're about 10, 15, uh, they're 10. So you're trying to build every ounce of compression you get out of this motor, aren't you? I am. You're going to be at 12 to 1, you know. Keep putting all these stupid ass, thin ass parts in here. So you got 10 thou off of the base, which takes 10 off the whole cylinder diameter, which means you're going to gain about half a point right there. You're at 10 and a half to 1. That puts you at 11. What kind of gas are you going to run? You're going to run 112 pump uh, race gas or 108? Mm, I'm running pump gas. Well, I think you're going to have a detonation issue. Be lucky your motor lives. Way too much. Yeah, these things are already peeling. That's shitty. I've never seen them do that before. It's crap. Stupid chromatic crap. What do you recommend? 20,000 James gas. Well, that's what I meant, but... You got them? Raise your get your damn compression back out of a little bit. I don't know what you're gonna do for gasoline in this motor because it sure ain't gonna be pump gas. You got some of those James gaskets? Yeah, they're on the shelf on the computer there. Did you figure out what kind of oil we're putting in yet? Yep. What's it called? Uh, that was the uh, brake. <laughs> the brake in oil. Yeah. It's made it, by Driven. It's high on the shelf and I'm short. Uh, and I might have sold a couple cords so it was further back this exactly. time. Exactly. Uh, but it was on the top right though, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Okay. Just making sure I had it in the right spot. It's, it's one down to be exact. Actually those gaskets are over in the drawer I think for Evo. Only the shovel head stuff is over there in the important area. Okay, so I take the oil here and I pour it up on top of the connecting rod to lubricate it. Like that. I did not see that. Oh, sorry, your cameraman's not doing his job anyway, so why worry about finding oil? So you got to work in the rod like right there. See how you do that? See how we get oil in there? Oh, yeah. You're so it penetrates all the way through? I'm going to pull a little more on the top. See, it acts like a big cup in there, that rod. Mm -hmm. See how it holds it? So that it gets the rod 100% lubricated. You can't say there's no oil in the bearings now. <clears throat> and so you got a couple ounces down in the bottom down in there too. So as soon as you start spinning this thing around, you're going to have oil in this motor. You can put a little bit more in there if you want, it doesn't really matter. It's just like wet something a little bit. Now, that oil is sitting in there right now that's <laughs> about uh, three quarters of an inch tall maybe in there now. Mm -hmm. When this motor turns over, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is it's going to go into this cavity right here. It's going to go blow in that breather hole right there, and then it's going to flood everything over here in this cam chest full of that liquid right there. Now I don't, I know you don't want none of that liquid stuff on this side, but it's going to come over there really quick, and then this is going to pick it up over here and send it back to your tank. That's why you want oil over here when you first start it. Now when you're kicking the bike over trying to get the oil pump pressure to get oil, mm -hmm. your whole motor's getting lubricated. Gotcha. So, that's what that's all about. That's smart. Okay, so we used up how much of this? Uh, was it uh, about this much? We got about a third of a quart we dumped in there. I got carried away. I got excited. Okay, 
that goes home with you so you can put it in your motor or your oil tank. Okay. Now, we need to do some lubrication on some parts here. We need to lubricate the rest pins. We got two of those, remember? Two of them. Like you gotta lubricate your studs. When you put your head bolts on here, they'll got some oil on the thread, so they'll tighten up correctly. You have good access right now to do this. Later on, you don't. It also gives you a good place to wipe your finger off too. If you, if you get some crap on it, just go like that. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get that part done. So that part of the job's done. Now you couldn't find the gaskets? Nope. How hard you look? This standard bore? What kind of gasket you want? Uh, good ones or something that keeps it around. 10, 5 to 1. I'm trying to make me a trap getting in that over here. Let me see that. So here's your James gasket. Here's your MLF gasket here. Fancy ones. This is probably the correct gasket right here to use. Okay, this appears to be a 22 thou gasket, 20 thou crush. And it fits an Evo. Big twin, because it doesn't have the scallops in there for 40. And then if you want to be cheaper, we have the format gasket, which seals up a lot of crap. But I prefer these. Let's go with those. So these have a vulcanized rubber material on there that actually has a little bit of something to it, not just a flash layer of some black crap that peels off. Those things look like vinyl windows is what those look like. Hmm. It's like the same material. Oh, these are open. So this has a sticky kind of, well, not really sticky, but it's kind of... Oh, I can feel it, yeah. It's got a little sticky. It's got a little squish to it. It's got some. It's got some bite to it. You can feel it trying to grab a hold. You like rubber. It's like a rubber finish. Mm -hmm. The silicon. I don't care about it. Slides out because the rubber. It's on top of the slimy part and it just slips out. Doesn't do a damn thing. I don't even know why they even put it on there. It's cosmetic. It makes people feel important when they see that red shit. Of course, mm. it's when you when it sticks out the side of the bike, you don't like it. But oh well. All right. So these are what I would use. Do so you like these? Yep. Good thing I got a set right here. That's convenient. Do they fit the cylinder? Oh, look at that. Amazing. Okay, it's a good time to put these on, is like right now. They appear to fit. There you go. Look at that. Okay, we're back. The uh, cameras decided I want to take a break. Camera and got tired of that. All right, what did I leave off? I got rudely interrupted. We got gaskets over there. I think I did that last. Yep, that was it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the pistons. We're gonna put some secret sauce inside the pinholes here. You know, if you jerk around too much in that pinhole, it will bite you and make you bleed. Because those stupid pin re gap things in there are sharp. Make sure you coat the whole inside. Okay. What's left? Cylinder. You need to lubricate the top inch and a half or so, inch, whatever. You don't need two more than one, two finger holes to do the whole top. Hmm. If you do it right, you can do it with one. Just smear it all around. Get a nice layer in there. 
See that layer of red in there? Yeah. See that highlights the, the marks? Yeah. Looks good. When you shove the piston in there, it slides up and she takes that oil and puts it all the way to the top. Lubricates the whole cylinder for you. It doesn't make a big mess. Otherwise, if you put oil in there and do that, it just it puts it all at the top of the motor and makes a big mess up on top. Powder coat hasn't chipped off yet. Must be good powder coat. Okay. See how it's lubricated? Good to go. Okay, rings. You know put rings on? Mm -mm. Good. That's called an expander ring. It expands. It's easy related to an oil ring. These oil rings. These are called rails. Now, the only ring you can wrap on a piston is oil ring rails because they're made out of steel. They're real thin. They bend easy. Mm. Doesn't hurt them. See how they spring right back? Mm -hmm. If you have the top ring, it'll, it won't come back. Okay, where's the gap at? The gap's right there. I'm going to take this gap, put it on the other side, rotate right over to where it's split right there so it stays stays there. Bring it around, lift it up so it doesn't scratch the piston. So you got the gap there. There's a gap there, gap there. Next gap's 180 over, so it's over here. When it's in there correctly, it's free floating, see? Mm -hmm. Okay, which ring's next? You didn't mix these, did you? Nope. Good. You have to figure it out then. Figure it out yet? Nope. Which ring's next? The thickest ring. They're all the same thickness. Oh. Oh. Try again. The thickest gap ring. Which one's that? This one. What? This, this one? one. Versus... This one. This one? Yeah. Where these go? <clears throat> uh, bottom and top? Yep. You just guessed it, didn't you? That was a pretty good guess. This is moly coated. So this is a top ring. This is a cast iron ring, so it's a second ring. <clears throat> okay, any marking goes up. See a marking? Dot. Is there a dot in there? I don't see oh, it. Looks like a dot, dude. No, I don't see the dot. Looking for it. Is there a dot in there? I don't see a dot. It's on the other side. There's a dot someplace, I just don't see it. Hit like that. Can you turn it a little bit more my way? I'm looking for my dot. That's got a backing. That's got a cut on it, so get the dots on this side someplace. Okay. It's somewhere. <clears throat> they're getting harder and harder every year because they don't. They're, they're getting lazy. They don't want to highlight them. It used to be there's a dimple in there, but anymore they. Okay, this has got a chamfered edge on this side. I know, but where's the dot? There it is. Oh. See how they're not making it easy to find anymore? Back in the old day, they had a big dimple there. Hmm. There's your dot. That's not much of an identifier, is it? Wow. So that would be right here in this area. So you take the oil of your thumb and just keep rubbing across it. Don't push too oh, hard. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Don't push wow. too hard, you'll bend the damn ring. Damn, it's invisible almost. Yeah, that's, I that's know, it's crazy. Getting, it's getting ridiculous. So dot goes up, any marking goes up. Any marking goes up. Now this ring here doesn't matter because it's square cut, but you still look at it. And put any marking goes up. It looks like they like the left side here as their favorite spot now. See, there's no markings on these.
This top ring easy does not matter. If the ring is square, rectangular section, mm -hmm. sharp on all the sides, then it doesn't matter. If there's a back cut on it, it matters. Hmm. If there's a taper, it matters. But I do not see. So it easy does nothing on the top ring, but. You never know when the manufacturer will play with you and come up with some stupid design that all of a sudden it matters. Yep. If you put it in wrong, it will not work. It'll leak. It'll suck oil like crazy. Okay, that one good. Okay, so this is our second ring. Dot is up because there's a dot right there. Mm -hmm. Now what you do is you put this in a groove. You spread it with your thumb and push down your forefinger and put on the piston. Do not wrap it. If you wrap the ring, it'll be like a big spring and it won't seal. Got that? Mm-hmm. So you find uh, the groove. See the groove? Mm -hmm. So you push down where it hits the piston, open with your thumbs, work it up around. And once you go over the top, you just push it down. The ring should be nice and free floating and not sticking anywhere. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't do this, it's bent. If it's bent, it won't work. Top ring the same way, except you go on the top groove this time. And do you space that like 180 from that other one? Or is that? No. Okay, so this one doesn't want to go quite all the way. So you can go over here and push it in sideways right here if you want. Just like putting a shoe on you. Go over the top, spread mm. it over. Mm -hmm. Do not buckle it though. If you bend it, it doesn't work again. See how it's nice and free? Yeah. Okay, our gaps were on the sides over here. So which one's which? Been right here, there's the gap. So your oil ring gap is here and over here. So I go 90 degrees to that. Okay. And I took the top ring, go 90, 100 degrees from that, 180 degrees around. Oh, well, I got over you. There. So now everybody, everybody has their own corner. Everyone's got their own home. Except for the, the expander, it's the same as one of the other ones. And that's the front. In the real world, it doesn't really matter because once you start moving piston up and down, they rotate. The only ones that really matter is the oil rings. Do not line up all those things at one spot because they will not move relative to each other. Mm. The whole thing goes and spins, but each other they stay fixed. Huh. So if you line those up, they will stay permanently lined up. Don't do that. Never put the expander gap where the other gaps are. If it, if it overlaps the gap, mm -hmm. it won't work. Hmm. You have a big problem. Okay, that's how that one's done. I'll let you do it, but you probably stay up and be here all night, so we're not going to do that. Sounds fair. So there's our gap. 90. Ninety over, and the gap's here, so when mm -hmm. you, you instantly cover up that area, so it'll see how I can. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you bring it right Slide around. it in there. That will lock yeah, it in. Pull it with your thumb. Yeah. Well, you lift up right here and lift up. I usually use my get my thumbnail under it. Now you know, put a big gouge across the piston, which doesn't make any difference, but it, it looks uh, not too good. Amateurish. Yeah, maybe. I was leaving my mark, so I know I did it. <laughs> okay, that's on there. Free floating. Good to go. Top ring. Don't put the top ring on first. Put the. It's hard to go over the other ring. There's our mark again. Yeah. Or their mark. The mark is up. Once again, put in the groove you want it to be in. Slide it down. See, I, I pulled too hard. See, I dropped out of the groove. So. Mm -hmm. Don't bend the ring like that. It's, I rolled my finger up like that just to get it to go in. Okay, see now it's still it's stuck right here on this groove, see? Mm-hmm. So let's get a little, little expansion, a little bit of fingers. Goes down. Make sure it's free. It is. You're golden. So if rings don't move, they don't work. Happy. Front Happy and forever. Rear. Okay, you got a front or rear knees or you give a shit? Don't care. Good. That means I don't care. Okay. <clears throat> That's right side. I put the snap ring on the right side if I did it right. It goes forward. 
Okay, see the gaps here? Mm -hmm. I know the other ones are over here. Yep. Okay. Put the gap in there. Squeeze right here. Piston okay, drops down. Okay. Put this one in. Mm -hmm. Make sure that one's out over on that side. Once again, get to go in this corner. Put a little angle on it. Oop, like that. So this popped out the other one. <laughs> Up right there. You have to have a little bit of angle on the piston to make it do it. You just push on it, just push it around. Put the downward force also. Mm -hmm. You can use your thumbnail to get it going a little bit more. See? Okay, here's your right gap here, so mm -hmm. it catches on top of the cylinder right here. Yeah. So you want to get it up, get the oil ring up out of there. We'll get it away from the center of the cylinder. Okay, put it in the groove like that. So you can go over here and just push it down. And see that one went right down? Mm -hmm. Just push it on it. Usually I use my little hammer, but I'm just using a force right now. There we go. Now once the piston squared up, you should be able to rotate it. It should float. If you can't do that, there's something wrong. Okay. Now that was just done with muscle force there, so. Okay, why is that not going in? There we go. Okay, so that one's ready to go in. Next one. Right side is right here. Right side of the cylinder. Where's my groove this time? This time it's on this side. Okay, I see the oil ring gap here. That means the other one's over here. There it is right there. There's a gap right here. It's already going in, see? Mm -hmm. Now, what I do for make it easier when I get down to some of these points, you take your little plastic hammer, you just lightly tap it in right here. And see, then you roll it across. Gotcha. So easy that was. Then you check the rotation. If it takes more pressure than that, don't hit on it because you're breaking something. But the little tapping will jar the ring and make it slide down. Now the real fine cylinder finish makes it easier to install these things, obviously. Hmm. Okay, so the wrist pin got pre-lubed because the cylinders were lubed already, the mm -hmm. bores. So it got lubed when I shoved it in, so I don't have to put the lube on it, so I don't get so dirty. So. Okay, so now we are on the left side of the motor because I got the wrist pins on, on the other side. Okay, now this is the front cylinders here. Which one's this one? It says F on it, see? Yes, sir. Okay, so we just come over here. Get your rod up out of the way. Evas are harder because you got the studs are in the way, but they're not that hard to do. Get the wrist pin to go in the hole there, whatever it is. There it is. Once I get the right spot, it goes right in, see? Oh, yeah. Okay, now you take a towel and cover up the gap hole so you don't drop your damn retainer in there. Most likely those are stainless, which means they're not coming out with a magnet. So that means you better not lose them. So it'll cover up the holes. Okay, stick it in there like this. But these are easy because they're light duty. Just kind of roll them in. I have to get over here where I can push with my thumb. See how I push with my thumb? Mm -hmm. And you just push it down with this as you push with your thumb. Should go in. I can't get it in there. 
don't have the leverage I need to get in there because the studs in the way. The more the cylinder slides down, the more it gets in your way. It slid down a long ways right now. Mm -hmm. So it gets down too far. Move it up a little bit, see? I got access to it. See, my, everything's getting away of me working my angles. Clip is it's not overlapping the hole here because that's where I have to put the clip at the end of it. So it comes time to take this thing out. It's going to be hard to get this one out. So I'll probably take off the other side. Right, <laughs> makes sense. Okay, it's in there. I'll grab a flashlight to make sure it is all the way in there. You want to make sure you can only see half of the snap ring. Because if it's in there correctly, half of it's down inside the groove, so you're only going to see half the clip from the top. If it's sitting up on top like that, you'll see the whole damn snap ring, understand? Got it. When it goes down the groove, it hides it a little bit. So you make sure it's recessed 100% in. It's not 100%. As it, it's as only, deep as it can go. Yeah, but it's only about halfway into the groove. Gotcha. If it went in 100%, the pin would come out. So. Okay, so that's all it took to do that. And then we take a little assembly lube, lubricate the skirt right here because you don't want this to be dry, even though we do have oil in there, lubricate it. Come over here. And don't jerk the damn cylinder, piston out of the cylinder, that would be a problem. Okay, now you just hold the piston, wiggle a little bit, push down. See, with a really light, fine finish on the cylinder, it goes down pretty easy. Down where the gasket is there. You're down. See how it moves pretty easy? Mm hmm. Well, make sure you don't slam the cylinder down and cut the gasket or bend it. You don't want that. That would be a problem. Go over here and make sure this piston is in it correctly right now. Front and forward. So we're at a top dead center here. Make sure you're not too high up in the air. See how you're below the surface here? Yeah. So you're not 100% up in the air. So Just at that chamfered edge. Yeah. Yeah, you're below it. So the 10 tile gasket would have made it closer to a zero depth condition. Right. So these are way below the zero deck. So the compression height of this piston could be made taller, but the problem is it makes the piston, it raises your compression ratio up. If this is actually a 10 and a half to one, the way it was made, and you, right. just, you pump it up another 10 thou more, it's gonna, you're gonna get another third of a point to a half a point more compression, which is too much for clump gas. Yeah. Everybody says they can run it. Well, there's a reason why they keep blowing head gas and have oil leaks and pull stuff out of cases. It's because you're detonating, you dumbass. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. 10 to one good, 10 and a quarter maybe, 10 and a half, you're gonna have problems. At least on California gas. You can run all day long with 10 to one. You know, unless it's 110 degrees out, 100 degrees out and you're in traffic, you're gonna have a detonation problem. Not on an Evo. On a shovel or an iron, you will. Not an Evo or twin cam. Okay, right now we're having a problem finding a pin hole there. So there it goes. Cheating with my finger from the other side. Okay, so that goes all the way over. Uncover the piston a little bit so I can get in there better. That's kind of critical so the order will pop out here in a second. 
is a little bit high, but it gives me better access to get in there. Cover up the whole hole. Okay, now, see how easy that one went in there? Mm-hmm. That's almost 108 across, but I didn't do it for that reason. I just did because with everything in the way, that's just where I pushed. That's just where I landed. So you can vary where you put the clip a little bit, but you can't go a quarter turn. You can't push on it because the clip has to be able to push a certain way to shove it in easily. If you saw most of the work that clip went in with my thumb. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This just did the final rolling around. But the thick ones, your thumb is not strong enough. That's why I don't like the thick ones. They don't stand any better. It's just hard to put in. Okay, that one's good. Okay. Oil. Now, if you haven't put any oil in the crank yet, you better hurry up and put some in there by now because this is it. We're shutting off the hole here after this goes down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember that oil ring's almost up, so I just got to push down on this corner to make sure it's in. Mm -hmm. Put it down. And I just, you got more control by tapping and pushing. Because see how it goes down nice and smooth. Right. Just wiggles the rings past. Right. Now when you get to the gasket, make sure you're not on it. And it goes right down. There you go. <clears throat> Can't quite turn in my hand. Now you need the tool. The race bike motor you got, you can. Hmm. They got finer finish than this. And lighter rings are lighter too. Okay, I push down the cylinders right here. It should turn through freely without hitting anything. Make sure your piston's in correctly. Is there an R on that one? Yep. Yeah. Do you hit the reed valve over there squealing? Yeah. <laughs> the cow in there. <laughs> to read. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if you turn them over backwards like this, the oil stays in the crankcase. Because the pickup is scooped to go mm -hmm. from this direction. When you're going backwards, the oil just keeps going in a circle. And I could see the film as it pushed the oil yeah. that you'd oiled from here yeah. all the way up. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you want, you can wipe off the excess right now. I'd leave it on there. You can wipe it right off if you want. Take your rag and just go like that. Just, just take off the heavy stuff. You're not trying to wipe it clean. Right. Because this can foul a plug out if it gets on the tip of it. Gotcha. Obviously. So you just wipe it off like that. You're fine. Now, if you notice, the rings are already scratching the cylinder up and breaking in the finish and all right, that. Right, right. We are breaking the rings in right now just by doing this. <laughs> right. You are. So I like put them just past top center on both. Mm-hmm. That way you don't have any crap in there. No the air in there, no moisture, no anything. Well, you got less chance of stuff getting in here. Right. Obviously. So there you go. That's awesome. So now it's ready for the heads. We already got assembly on those studs. See how you can't get oil yeah. studs right now? That's why you pre-do it. So there you go. That's how it gets it done pretty good. Now, I didn't put this on over here because... This on right now, it rattles.